Hello and welcome back to another video series in the Blender game engine. In this quick video, I want to show you the new mouse look actuator in Blender, which allows you to create sort of a first person shooter, sort of a setup for the controls of the camera of your game. In other words, when you're making a first person shooter, you want to be able to control the camera in your game, which you're looking through to play the game, with the mouse movement of your computer. So if you move your mouse up or down, it moves the view of the camera to rotate up or down, or left or right. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on the splash screen to get rid of it and the first thing I have to do is change my render engine over to the blender game so up here in the information bar in blender I'll change uh, cycles render or blender render depending on which one you have um, over to the blender game engine and of course when you do that you get more options for games over here in the properties window but I need a logic editor window so what I'll do is I'll grab this little cross hatched area and drag it straight down to divide my 3d viewport into two and I'm going to change this bottom 3D viewport uh, by clicking on this button down here into a logic editor window. If you watched the last video in this series, and I'm assuming that you have, you'll know that it's in this logic editor window that we can create the programming, programming in quotes because we're not actually typing any code, but this is where we can create the logic or the programming for the different elements of our game. We create programming using three different types of logic bricks. We need to add a sensor to detect um, an action a player would perform, like pressing a key down on your keyboard or moving the mouse, or when two things collide, it's whenever you're detecting something happening. And then we have to add an actuator which actually does something if one of the sensors becomes triggered. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my camera by of course right clicking on it and I'm going to add a sensor called a mouse sensor to it because we want to detect when the user is moving their mouse on their screen. So I'll click on mouse with the camera selected and that adds a new mouse sensor logic brick. Now you can of course collapse these logic bricks once you start adding a whole bunch of them uh, but really what this represents is a sensor that detects um, something to do with your mouse. Now by default the mouse event that it's actually looking for is when you click your mouse left or your left mouse button uh, when you're playing the game. That's not what we want. We want to detect mouse movement, not a button press on your mouse. So I'll click on this little pullout and I'm going to select mouse movement or movement here from the pullout menu. Of course you can have mouse over or when you use your wheel or when you press the, the right button, etc. But we want movement. So now we're sensing, uh, or the camera is sensing when you're actually moving your mouse. It, this isn't very descriptive though, it doesn't detect you know left or right or up or down, it's just general mouse movement. The actual heavy lifting, in other words, the most of the programming involved in making your camera move in the right way when you move your mouse is done by the actuator. And this is a new actuator as of Blender 2.72, I think. Um, before they had this actuator, and I'm gonna go ahead and add this mouse actuator. Before this was around, you had to use a whole bunch of Python code that most people just found online and they copied and pasted it and it worked, but now it's much, much simpler. So I'll select the mouse actuator. Um, it actually did exist before, but only to change your mouse visibility, which is great if you want to have like screens in your game, like menu screens where you need to see the mouse cursor. But we'll change this mode over to look, and this is, again is the new option. And when we use the look option, we have a lot more options here. We're not going to play with any of these options in this video, but in the next video we're going to prove upon this FPS sort of movement. We'll talk about that in a minute though. Let's go ahead and connect up the sensor to the actuator, and of course when you do that, you grab the little port over here, and you click and drag with your mouse, and you let go with your mouse cursor right over that port. It does, of course, add an AND controller. We haven't talked about what this actually means yet. We'll get to that in a future video. But for now, we have a setup that works. On our camera, we have a sensor for mouse movement. We have an actuator for mouse look. All we have to do now is go through our camera view and press P on our keyboard. Yes, when you're playing a game, you generally should be looking through your camera. And of course, you need to for this because you're controlling the movement of your camera, which controls the movement of your view of the game. So I can go down here to the uh, view menu at the bottom of my 3D viewport, and I'm going to select uh, camera, or of course I can press zero on my numpad, so I'll press zero, and that looks through my camera. If I want to get out of camera, I can press zero on my numpad again, but I want to be through camera, and I'll press P on my keyboard so that I'm looking through my camera in game. And now if I move my mouse, you can see that if I move my mouse upwards, it looks up, down looks down, left and right. 
and that's all great. I'm going to press escape though because I want to see more of my world. In fact, what I'll do is I'll press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a plane to make a crown. The plane of course is only really, really small. So I'll press S on my keyboard to scale it out. And then maybe I'll press 30 on my keyboard. So S and then 30 and I'll press enter and I'll move the cube up by one. So I'll select the cube and I'll press G to grab Z one and enter. So that's G to grab and then you press Z and then one and then press enter to move it up by one unit. And I want my camera to actually land on the ground. Right now I'm sort of flying. In fact, I'm gonna divide this window into two. So I'll grab this little area here and drag it to the left. And I'm gonna press zero to get out of my camera view. This camera is sort of flying right now. So I'm gonna go over to my physics tab in the properties window with the camera selected. And I'm gonna change the physics type from static over to dynamic. If you think back to the last video, we talked about two different types of physics, rigid body and dynamic. And the difference here is that both are controlled by gravity. If you select either rigid body or dynamic, your object will fall and collide with any other dynamic or static objects. Um, but in this case, we want to choose dynamic because dynamic objects, unlike rigid body objects, will not tumble. Your character won't accidentally fall over. So I'll select dynamic. So now if I go ahead and I'll actually press T and T to hide my two uh, tool shelves. And maybe I'll zoom in over here and I'll press P on my keyboard. The character falls and lands on the ground and now I'm sort of looking around like a first person shooter. The last thing I'll do in this video is I will add some movement. Now I gotta say in the next video, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a much better first person shooter setup. It's actually not a good idea to add your controls directly to your camera object. And you'll see why in just a second. Uh, let's go ahead though with the camera selected. Let's go ahead and add a keyboard sensor. So I'm gonna select add sensor and keyboard. I wanna specify what key I'm pressing on my keyboard. So I'm gonna click uh, on the button next to key and I'll press W on my keyboard because if you're using your uh, mouse with your right hand to control the movement of your camera, you wanna use W and ASD to move your character around. So I'm gonna add an actuator now. I'll add a motion actuator, and I wanna move my character on the uh, Z axis, actually. If you look at your camera and you switch your gizmo over to local view, you're actually gonna see how your camera is really pointed. Your camera's axes are kind of funny. The Z axis actually points away directly from the back of your camera. But if you were to kind of draw a line through that Z axis, through the lens of your camera, that's in the negative Z axis. So if I move forward, depending on which way I'm looking, I wanna go on the negative Z local axis. So down here in the logic editor window, I wanna set the linear velocity on the Z axis to a negative number. So I'm gonna use negative 10 and I'll press enter but I wanna make sure that's the local axis, not the global one, because the global one will actually move you, I think, downwards if you're negative, going in the negative Z direction. So I'll click on this little L to make that local, and now I need to connect my sensor to my actuator. So I'll click and drag and connect the port and let go with my mouse over that input port. And of course it creates another AND controller, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'll make this window a little bit bigger and I'll put my mouse in there and press P on my keyboard. So now I land and hit the ground, but if I press W on my keyboard, I'm moving forward. Of course, yes, if I let go of the W key, I do glide. And that's part of the thing about using linear velocity. We will solve that in the next video though, when we create a more full and complete uh, first person shooter control setup. The problem with this setup, again, is that your character does glide after you let go, which could be okay if you're playing on like an ice surface. The other problem is that when you point upwards and then you press W, you actually hop. And if you think about it, if you're pointing upwards and you move forward on the local Z axis or negative 10 on the local Z axis, if you go up, if you were to program the S key on your keyboard to move backwards and you were looking up, you would actually go through the ground and that's a problem. So in the next video, we're going to create a more uh, complete FPS setup, including strafing side to side and looking around and moving around. It'll be great. But that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.